introduce yourself, please. Uh, your background in arcade gaming and uh, why Game Warp was started. All right. My name is Jack Laughlin. I've uh, been an avid game player since the very early 80s. Um, I started the Pinball Arcade, Florida Arcade and Pinball Collectors Group about six, seven years ago, and that's where Game Warp kind of grew out of. Um, there's a group of us uh, in the, the group that decided, to, hey, let's put on a show. We wanted to do both arcade and pinball machines. We wanted to bring it to Orlando. So that's the whole reason why Game Warp came into be. Okay. And uh, so your background's early 80s gaming? Like our yeah, I started playing, I mean, the first games I remember were like Space Invaders and then Pac-Man. I actually remember before Pac-Man came out, so probably 79, 80 is why I started playing games as a kid. And then, of course, I just grew up with them throughout the 80s and the 90s. Then I got into arcade collecting in the mid-90s when I found out that you could get the games really cheap. Because obviously once they sell, once they are past their prime as far as making money, they were just being sold off for almost nothing at auction. So I kind of got into that um, in college started buying machines, arcade games first, and got into the pinball. And then about six, seven years ago, I said, hey, let's organize a group in Florida for people that collect arcade machines here locally, because obviously the big problem with arcade machines is they're heavy. So it's not like you can just you know go buy one from California and have it shipped to you for a reasonable price. So we made the group so that the Florida collectors could get together, buy, sell, trade, and know that the person you're talking to is going to be at least in the state. So that makes it a lot easier you know, to, to get the games back and forth. So how many games do you own now? Right now, probably about 25. Okay. How, what's the most you've ever owned? Probably about 25. It's because of the show. Um, we tend to buy a lot of extra games and store them specifically for the show. So right now, I've actually got more games than I would normally have for my personal collection um, because we want to have, you know, if something comes up that's rare or interesting, we'll buy it and keep it just to bring it to the show. Okay, so uh, we meaning you, is there a group that behind this that has games, like who's behind this event? Well, actually, the games all come from collectors in the group. Um, there's a four of us, uh, about three or four collectors that bring most of the games, um, and that help organize the show. It's myself, a uh, person named Mick, um, we have Bill and a couple other guys on the forums that everybody will know that, uh, that bring some games. Then we have a lot of members that just bring in one or two games. and. But it's between that group of people that bring in large numbers and the people that bring in one or two, because we appreciate no matter how many. And that's how the show comes together. It's, it's all, all collectors bringing in their games. And what forum are you speaking of? What, what forum? The, the Florida Arcade and Pinball Collector Group, okay. which is at arcadeflorida.com. And that's kind of our forum, our group, from which everything's organized and, and comes from. Okay. And uh, there's also a group called the Village BBS, is that right? That's us. Okay, that's you as well? Yeah, that's the... It's a kind of a long story, but the, the, the Village VBS is a bulletin board I started back in 1992 okay. um, that's gone in one form or another, but the arcade's part of that now, and, but it's it's, it's it's its own separate group, but it's housed on that same form. VBS was originally a dial-up. Was this originally yes. a dial-up VBS? It was. Awesome. Uh, with the uh, dial-up bulletin board started in uh, September 1992, and it's been online in one form or another since then, so over 20 years. So most people... Uh, I guess younger than me, I'm 32. Don't know what a BBS is. What? What was a BBS back in the day? That was bulletin board system. As before the well, before the internet became popular, um, we still had message bases and online games and everything else we have today. But we had them over modems, and uh, instead of connecting with 50 different people, you're probably only connecting with maybe one or two people tops. You would dial into a bulletin board. You'd post a message, and somebody would you would you would disconnect, and then somebody would come after you connect to the bulletin board and reply to your message and then disconnect. It was a very interesting um, scenario compared to how today everything's just instantaneous. And, and about 10 years ago, uh, you know, uh, 20, wow, wow, 20, 18 years ago in Jacksonville we had like uh, modems, game VBS, Cyber Express, and so we had four, six, eight, you know, people online. So we were playing Doom and Warcraft. Sure. And, and what's funny to me is, this is a total tangent side note, is it used to be something called the wall, or the graffiti wall, where you'd post messages, yeah, we right? we had that. Okay, you know what that, and, and what is Facebook? A glorified PBS wall. Of course it is, yeah. And, and I used to be like, well, I, look at these people just chatting. How dumb. Yeah. Just play Doom. And now I'm like, oh my God, everybody's Facebook. Everybody, the whole... Your, your cousins, your mother, your, 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 your nieces are all on Facebook on something that was, you know. There's almost absolutely nothing you'll see on the internet today that was not on bulletin boards before. Correct. Online, online, uh, the uh, online games, message forums, chat rooms, everything you can possibly think of existed on the bulletin boards 
just obviously to a smaller scale because we didn't have the connectivity or the networks in place. But um, even email, I mean, you could email your friend in California now, you'd have to hop from Baltimore to Baltimore. Right, it would take right. four days. It would take four days for you to get the reply back, but you could still do it. <laughs> or you can dial up long distance yes. and eat the bill back then. Yeah, you could dial up your friend, <laughs> the local Baltimore of your friend and have instantaneous, but you would have to pay the long distance charges, yes. Oh yeah, it was fun. It was uh, fun. Uh, the t-shirts? The t-shirts are 20 bucks. Oh, those, Randy? Um, or, Randy, how much are the older t-shirts? Um, those are 15. 15. Go for it. It's fine. This is commerce, man. It's busy. Yeah, absolutely. At Game Warp. Uh, what was the, the main inspiration behind Game Warp to start, start it, like to get it? Yeah, I mean, we wanted, like I said, we wanted to bring something to Orlando. Um, there was a great show down south called Ape, which we love. Marcel right. puts it on. We, we love Ape. But we wanted to do something a little bit closer to our neck of the woods because we're all from Central Florida, Tampa, Orlando the area. So we were like, well, why don't we do a show? I mean, we've got the collectors. We've got the community, obviously. So um, we said, hey, Orlando's a great idea because, you know, you can come here, plan a vacation around it. Right. You can show up, um, play some games. You can also go to Disney World. So. You know, we also wanted to bring in the panels and the guests. I mean, this year we had Billy Mitchell, Todd Rogers, we had the whole panel. We also had all the arcade. We had Twin Galaxies here with the uh, arcade high scores. We had several records broken here this year, actually. So, I mean, that's kind of like what we want to do. We want to turn this into a full-scale convention with uh, the games, the history, the panels, the guests, the movie premieres, everything you can do. So you want to grow it. Uh, how, how have uh, the other events gone so far? How is it progressing? Well, this is, I mean, every year is almost up which is insane. And so, I mean, the second year was twice as big as the first year, and this is almost twice as big as the second year. Um, so, how will the event grow? Like, what specifically is going to grow in the future with the event? Like, what things? Well, we, we've had, we still have to kind of plan for it, obviously. We have to get through this year first. But, um, obviously, space and size and scope. So, I mean, you know, next year, we would definitely need to have more room and more games and more panels and just more everything. So in um you know and down the road we you know we who knows we might introduce you know more aspects of gaming into it we're trying to build up the console side of it as well this year we had a, a much more organized console tournament we actually had five console tournaments this year wow so um you know we our our end goal is to support all aspects of gaming from the arcade the pinball to the consoles and everything from the classic systems to the the newest games of today and how do you how do you uh, appropriate space for like a certain amount for this for pinball arcades tournament this tournament right. that tournament console. Well, I mean, obviously, right now the games are the most important part because that's kind of the the backbone of the show. And every year we actually pick and choose games based on what we want to exhibit. So we're always looking for a good mix of games. We try to mix it up every year. We don't we don't want you to come back next year and see the exact same game. Right. Um, so we'll actually say, okay, you brought this game this year, but next year can you bring a different game? Right. Or or we'll be or we try to set up some sort of sometimes themes. You know, if we can get like you know all the asteroids together, all the Star Wars together, we'll do that. You know? Okay. Yeah. And so I mean, every year we try to make it a little bit different, and we actually try to plan it out so that the mix is good. We always try to keep it 50% pinball, 50% arcade. Obviously, we're more interested in the classic gaming, but we still also try to have some of the newer games as well. Right. New meaning like 90s. Yeah. I mean, Street Fighter. Early 2000s. No matter what you're in, we want you to come come here and have a good time. So I mean, we've got you know the the Pac-Mans and the Space Invaders, but we've also got the Street Fighters and the Candy Cabs with Japanese shooters. I mean. Whatever you're into, we got, and what we hope is that the people that are in the Japanese candy shooters will come in and play Cubert or Asteroids, and that the people that like Cubert and Asteroids will come in and, and try, you know, a Neo Geo game, and then that, you know, we can just kind of promote it and just grow it in all sectors. And lastly, uh, why should someone attend Game War? Because <laughs> it's the best three days you'll have ever spend in your life. No, seriously, I mean, if, if you want to see everything, the classic games, the new games, the consoles, the pinballs, it's really, really hard to find this much of a collection in one room at one place. And that's what we try to bring people is a unique experience, something you're not going to find at you know, your local bowling alley anymore, or your local mall. I mean, most of the arcades are gone, and then once they're still here, mostly Redemption, or if they have classic games, they're in bad repair. And so what we want is we want to bring the games back, if only for a weekend, so that you can play them as they were meant to be played and get that old arcade feeling back. Excellent. Thank you for uh, putting on the show and the interview, and uh, uh, good luck with the future years. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.